In this video, I'm going to give you my personal recommendation on the best laptops for architecture in 2021. I'm going to give you some pointers and best practices to follow when buying a new laptop. And of course, I'll share which laptops you should avoid buying if you're interested in using them for architecture. Let's get started. Okay, so before we start, I just want to point out that what you will see in this video is not financial advice. This is just for pure entertainment and my personal opinion on the topic of the best architecture laptops at the moment. Uh, this is mainly geared towards professional architects and students who are considering getting a new laptop for their professional work, including heavy modeling, rendering, animation, various grasshopper simulations, analysis, and anything of that sort. So just wanted to give you a heads up because we're not talking about playing video games on your laptop here. Even though I used to play a lot of video games uh, while I was studying, mainly PS Football, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and one, one and only Crisis. I'm sure some of you guys who are close to my age will definitely know what I'm talking about. Today, we're only going to talk about laptops as it doesn't make much sense to compare them with desktop computers because of the price difference and also because of the usage of both. Uh, you would definitely want to get a laptop if your priority is to be flexible and mobile at all times. Desktop computers are much more powerful and much better option if you're located at one place and you don't plan on moving. So I'll leave this subject for some future video, but let me know in the comments if you're interested in hearing more about my personal recommendations uh, in that area as well. Let's talk about some factors, components that you want to pay attention to when buying a laptop for architecture. I'm sure that all of you have heard of computer components like processor, uh, RAM memory, hard disk, graphics card, motherboard, etc. But how can you know which one is the most important and which one to pay the most attention to as an architect? When it comes to laptops, you don't necessarily need to worry too much about its components being compatible with each other because you're not going to buy separate parts and then build a laptop yourself. This is something that you may want to do if you're planning to build your own desktop computer and you know what you're doing, of course. But in case of laptops, most of the times you're going to buy a laptop from a brand like Asus, Dell, HP, and of course, let's not forget Apple fanboys. I'm going to simplify this as much as possible so you have an idea which components of your laptop are responsible for certain workflows that we're using in architecture. There are four major components that you should be looking at, and those are processor or CPU, graphics card, RAM memory, and hard disk. These four components will determine the speed and efficiency of your laptop the most. When it comes to saving time and having a seamless workflow these four components will be responsible for everything and of course the quality and price of your laptop will be driven by these components now let's talk about them a little bit so cpu or processor is mostly responsible for the speed of your system and this is where rendering speed is determined and all of those small buckets that you see when you press render However, not all rendering engines are the same. Some use GPUs or graphics cards, some use CPU, and there are even some hybrid methods of rendering uh, both uh, CPU and GPU power. So in general, you can think about processor as the main factor when it comes to rendering your architectural visualizations and animations. A graphics card or GPU is determining the level of real-time interactions that you have with your model. So the better your GPU is, the smoother and nicer would be the real-time effect. So this is something that you can see, for example, when you're using V-Ray Interactive Mode or when you're using any other real-time 3D immersive engines like Lumion, Twinmotion and others. Uh, Lumion is a great example here because if your GPU is bad, good luck uh, running Lumion, it's going to crash and freeze to the point of frustration. RAM memory is really important as well. The more you have, the better, of course. So by having uh, more RAM memory, you will avoid program crashes and everything will run much, much smoother. Imagine that you have to open a model that is heavier than one gigabyte, for example, and imagine opening a couple of more programs with files this size. If you have low memory, this would be a mission impossible for you. So we all know that as architects, we use many applications for different purposes, and oftentimes we have them open simultaneously. So if you want your system to run smoothly, make sure to fit it uh, with as much RAM memory as possible. My recommendation is to get, of course, the higher the better, I would, I would aim around 32 gigs, but if your laptop can handle it, and if you're willing to spend some extra cash, uh, 64 gigs is always uh, better. 
Uh, the last component that is very important uh, is your hard drive. It's very important that you understand the difference between HDDs and SSDs. I'm not going to bore you to death by exploring the technical differences between these, but let's just say that SSDs are based on a new, better and improved technology that brings lighting speed comparing uh, them to a head to head with HDDs. This means that you definitely want to make sure that your laptop is using SSD instead of HDD and oftentimes uh, the SSDs won't have the same amount of gigabytes as HDDs for the same price but the speed will be up to 10 times better so my advice is to get an SSD from around let's say 256 gigabytes and then use some external hard drives if you just want to, sh to store your files and projects. When it comes to the use, uh, use case uh, of SSDs they're responsible for loading all of your textures and external files in your project. So if you compare this to a typical HDD, uh, you'll have to wait a long time for your project to load. So save yourself a lot of time and make sure to have an SSD instead of HDD for your laptop. Now we can mention some other aspects and criteria when choosing a laptop like better life or the quality of screen. I know that for some of you these aspects can be equally important but I think that if you're planning to do some serious visual work on your laptop you should always hook it up to an external monitor and then you'll have no problems with the quality of colors in your workspace. Uh, this is why your graphics card is really important uh, because it will give you the option to work on a separate monitor and if you don't have a graphics card on your laptop uh, you will only be using the internal graphics card uh, which comes uh, with the laptop but you'll have quite a lot of difficulties with the external screens at that, uh, that case. Before I give you my recommendations, I would like to emphasize which laptops you should avoid if you're talking about using them for architecture. I'm sure that some of you may not agree with this, but here it is anyways. So place number one goes for gaming laptops. This is the most common mistake that I see a lot of architecture students and professionals make when it comes to choosing a laptop for work. Gaming laptops are definitely a much better choice if you're comparing them with a typical consumer grade laptops that is just used for watching movies, you know, browsing the internet and other light work tasks. However, if, you, if your focus is not on playing games, but architecture software and serious work, this is definitely not the best option and not the best value for your money. Since we're talking about gaming laptops, I have to mention one company that is all about gamers and gaming gear. Uh, it's called Razer and it has a wide variety of products, including gaming laptops. Their best laptop product is called Razer Blade. However, in their lineup of uh, laptops, they have a special edition laptop that is called Razer Blade Studio Edition. This product is great, but honestly, I wouldn't recommend it because I think that is really, really overpriced. I just wanted to show you that this example uh, will illustrate that even gaming companies that create laptops are creating special edition laptops that are actually just for engineers, architects, video editors, and professionals. Place number two goes for MacBook laptops. So this is a touchy subject and in order to fully understand my point of view when it comes to using MacBooks for architecture, I suggest that you watch this video, it's somewhere around here, uh, Rhino for Mac versus Rhino for Windows, where I explained in depth the reasons why you should go with Windows platform. In short, you would have many compat compatibility issues as a lot of software packages that you will use for architecture are just simply not going to work on Mac. Steve Jobs himself said once that he doesn't care about the professionals and that Apple products are made more for a wide consumer market and not the high intensity and heavy work. Even the newest M1 chips that Apple recently announced which contain both CPU and GPU cores are more of a low to mid-level processors that work great for their MacBook Pro that has a diagonal of 13 inches. In my opinion, as an architect, you really cannot do any serious work with a laptop that has a screen of only 13 inches. Uh, you know, don't get me wrong, the M1 chips are at the top of their class if we're talking about 13 inch laptops, but for our work, this is just not enough. If we're talking about 16 inch MacBook Pro, uh, they don't use this M1 chip, but instead they use separate CPU and GPUs. Currently, it comes with Intel Core i9 processor and AMD Radeon Pro GPUs. The RAM memory can be expanded up to 64 gigs, which is great, but the price for this machine goes from $2,800 to $4,500 if you try to max out CPU, GPU, and RAM. 
Uh, just like with that Razer Blade 15 Studio Edition that I mentioned previously, I think that this is overpriced. Plus, you have numerous com uh, compatibility issues with software and plugins that we use as architects. All right, so now let's talk about what kind of laptops you should get if you're planning on using them for architecture. First and foremost, the laptops that you should be looking for are called workstation laptops. These machines are specifically designed for intensive and heavy workloads, and their parts reflect that very well. For example, workstation laptops often have special graphics cards that are not uh, the same as those in a typical gaming laptop. Instead, these graphics cards are optimized for professional work like 3D modeling, rendering, and video editing. One of those best features of these machines is that they are optimized for constant work, durability, and efficiency, which means that you can use these workstation laptops for many more uh, years to come. I can give you my personal example. I currently own two workstation laptops and a special workstation desktop machine. I bought my first workstation laptop in 2014. By the way, this was my biggest investment up until that point, and it was the best decision I've ever made. It was 17 inch Dell Precision M6800. This machine looks very clunky and it's quite heavy, but it is a living proof that workstation laptops last long. I still use this machine today after seven years and I've never had any hardware issues with it. This just proves the fact that workstation laptops are made to last long and to be super reliable. My second workstation laptop is 15 inch HP a ZBook G3 mobile workstation and I got it four years ago. Similar to my previous workstation, I've never had any problems with it and compared to Dell Precision, uh, it's much smaller, lighter, more efficient and of course has a lot more horsepower. I'm sure that these uh, workstation laptops will continue to work for me in the future, which was not the case with some previous consumer grade laptops that I had in the past. Okay, so based on my personal experience and experience from people in our industry, I can reliably recommend the following three brands. The first one is Dell with their precision workstations. The second one is HP with their ZBook mobile workstations. And the third one is Lenovo with ThinkPad P-Series mobile workstations. These are the types of laptops that you want to use if you're planning on using them for architecture, 3D modeling, rendering, animation, editing, and other real-time uh, visualization engines like Twinmotion, Lumion, Unreal, Enscape, and so on. You will notice that the price of these workstation laptops will be different starting from 1000 to 2500 and more, but whatever you choose here will be a good choice. I would personally recommend 15-inch workstation uh, that has at least 16 gigabytes of RAM, 10th generation of Intel i7 or better, Quadro GPU and SSD of 256 gigs. Now let's see where you can find these workstations. Okay, so let's start with Dell website, dell.com. Here you can find precision workstations. I'm gonna leave these links uh, below in the description. So, so here you can see that they have three types of series. They have uh, 3000, 5000 and 7000 series. Here you can actually see uh, what is the difference between these series. The 3000 series is, let's say, the least powerful. And then as, as we move along, we have 7000 series as the best one. Of course, like you don't necessarily need to get the best series, but uh, here I'm gonna recommend uh, two, two types. I'm gonna recommend you one uh, of 5000 and one of 7000. Uh, below here you can check uh, and you can actually see these workstations. Uh, we will take a look at a 15 inch uh, mobile workstation. I think that you don't necessarily need 17 inch model. So I'm gonna click here and I'm also gonna open uh, this one. This one is also a 15 inch mobile workstation. And let's take a look at these models. So here you can see their configuration. You can see the prices as well. As you saw, like I would recommend that you get at least uh, 16 gigabytes. Uh, this is eight gigabytes. Of course, like, you know, this can work, but definitely I would go with this particular choice because this one doesn't even have the graphics card. It has integrated graphics. It has Quadro, it has uh, i7 10th generation, and it has 16 gigs of RAM. This would take you to this price of uh, 2,249. So I would definitely choose any of these three. You can I see here their prices? You can see what they contain. For example, these ones have 32 gigs, which is even better. You can click on the customize and buy, and then you can choose and you can kind of change the options that you have here available. So if you take a look at this model, uh, 7550, you can actually take a look at uh, 360 view. You can kind of see what this uh, laptop looks like. You can get an idea of 
what you would get. You can see the fans in the back, you can see the ports on the sides. So these two would be my recommendations. This one from uh, 7000 series and this one from 5000 series Dell workstation laptops. When it comes to ZBook HP, you can see on this page different kind of options that you have. Currently, we only have this one option available to choose from. So I'm just going to click here on customize and buy. Uh, so you get an idea of the final price of how this would look like. So currently, this base option is uh, around 1500. Uh, if you change, for example, let me see. So here we have base features. Here we can change the, uh, the processor. So if you go for, let's say, i7, we can uh, see the difference in price here. So let's just go with the first one. With this option, you also get a Quadro graphics card and you can see that the final price would be around uh, 2000. So if you're talking about uh, HP ZBook workstations, uh, PowerG7 is a great choice. And of course, the last one that I want to share with you is Lenovo ThinkPad P-Series mobile workstations. Uh, you can see on this page that they actually made these uh, workstations for engineers. And uh, my best advice would be to choose one of these two options here. If you open up this one, here you'll be able to see that they're actually made for students, engineers, CAD and industrial professions. Of course, the price is kind of like the lowest of all of these three brands that I noticed. And you can also uh, use the April Showers coupon code to save a 42% on the workstation at the moment. So this is definitely the best buy if you're planning on buying the, the, the computer right now. And here below you can see the tech specs and you can see what is possible to upgrade. Uh, it can even go to uh, 128 gigabytes of RAM, which is great. And of course it has uh, Nvidia a Quadro graphics card, even has the RTX uh, edition. This is all customizable. This is like the, the lowest price point that I have, uh, but you can also, you know, you can build your own and you can kind of test to see uh, what would work for you. So if we uh, click here, build your own, and we try to make our own workstation, you'll be able to choose particular uh, options. So let's take a look here. So let's choose as we used before uh, i7, the first one. Uh, and then of course you can see the difference in price here. Let's go with the memory of 16 gigs. So let's go with, yeah, it's the same, this option. Uh, here is the SSD, below here you have the display. We're gonna leave this uh, as default. And you now this is the Quadro graphics. So you, all, you, you already have the Quadro graphics card, so you don't need to uh, upgrade. If this is a budget that is uh, good for you. So this is the price that is going to give you a very good workstation and it's gonna last a long time. Out of these three options, this one is the most affordable. And of course, it's up to you to decide which one would work for you. Those were my laptop recommendations for architecture. Any of these machines will work great for any 3D application, but of course, the more money you spend, the better performance you're going to get out of them. I know that these prices are not exactly within a typical student's budget, but I can guarantee that with these machines, you will not need to worry for a long period of time. One more thing, you could also try to find these workstations on eBay or Craigslist, and if they are already used, the price would be much cheaper and affordable. Uh, when choosing a second-hand workstation, make sure that it's not older than six months and that a buyer is somebody who's been in business for a while and has good customer feedback and recommendations. I bought uh, both of my uh, workstation laptops in second hand and as I said they still work uh, flawlessly uh, up until today. Okay so uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this video. I'm also thinking about creating a separate video that's going to talk about uh, desktop computers for architecture and my hardware recommendations in that area. So let me know in the comments if you would be interested in hearing more about this topic. Cheers guys. Thank you.